Hello, my name is Tom Mueller, and I am one of the assistant directors in the Geotech Center. And I am here to talk to you about the United States Census, its history, and its geography. The U.S. Constitution requires a census taken once every 10 years. These numbers are tied to the number of representatives in the House of Representatives per state. But before we get into that, let's look at the history of acquiring data about the United States population. In 1790, this was the first United States Census, and they were not focused on individuals, but they were focused on households. And as we started to see in the very next census, it wasn't just about getting numbers. It was about acquiring other information about the residents of the United States. So for example, we started to add questions about age cohorts. Now age cohorts are age groupings. So which age grouping do you fall in? Are you in ages five to 10, 11 to 15, 16 to 20, etc.? There were also questions about education attached to the United States Census. Obviously, questions could also be removed. After the Civil War, we saw questions about slaves removed from the United States Census. And we also started to see technology roaming along in the United States Census. You had the issue of punch cards and the use of electric tabulating machines to process the data. As America started to expand its reach outside its traditional borders in the early 1900s, the United States Census followed. It also gathered information on new territories in the United States, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, and Guam. The 1940 Census also found the United States Census examining the housing within the United States. And they also started to use a sampling method to start to understand specific social and economic factors within the United States. By 1950, the United States started to use other data sets to assess the actual totals. Uh, data sets on immigration, vital data sets, and this helped them get a ac more accurate picture of the United States. Thanks to that issue of sampling, the United States Census was divided into two stages a very short form in which everyone in the United States would fill it out, and then a much longer form in which the, a sampling of the population would answer. And these questions would be related to social and economic factors. In the 1990 census, we started to see one of the great deliverables from the United States Census. And this is known as the Topological Integrated Geographic Encoding and Referencing System, otherwise known as TIGER. This was the first country digital spatial data sets available. And this looked at streets. And along with those streets, it also had the names of the streets and the address ranges. It had the row, it had the railroads, it had the boundaries. And all of this allowed a stepping stone to website direction. So things like MapQuest and Google Maps were built on this type of platform of data. By the 2010 census, the long form was no longer used. And the questions that were asked in that long form were moved to a different category called the American Community Survey. Needless to say, with this form removed, we had one of the shortest census forms in the history, as it only asked about 10 questions. The American Community Survey, again, using random sampling, asking questions about economic and social factors, is conducted every year. And depending on the size of your area is when you can get those estimates. So if you have a very large area, as shown here, equal or greater to 65,000 people, you can get estimates every year. If you have a looking at a very small area, which is a block group, which we'll explain that a little more in a minute, you can only get those estimates once every five years. So let's get to the importance. In 1929, the federal government capped the number of representatives in the House at 435. And then due to an issue called method of equal proportions, it based the population on the number of seats within that House of Rep. Well, after you cap them, that means states that saw growing populations gained seats in the House of Representatives, and states that saw population losses 
saw a dwindling amount of representation in the House of Representatives. I've actually lived in Pennsylvania for the past 20 years, and we have seen the loss of representation, the amount of representatives we have overall in the state, diminish. It is not just about the numbers, though. There are billions of dollars tied to the United States Census numbers through federal programs. And also, some states use the United States Census numbers to base theirs on different state fundings. For example, in Pennsylvania in the year 2000, there was a law that said you had to have a certain amount of people in your county to receive certain state funds. Okay, how can we examine this data? Well, you are not able to look at everybody's form that they filled out. Obviously, there are privacy issues, so we need to group that data. And there are several geographical levels. So you can find the data at the country level, the state level, or the town level. And usually the census calls that minor civil divisions. And there are other forms in which you can get this particular data set. But as far as minor civil divisions, think about this. If I can get that data for the city of Philadelphia, New York, Baltimore, LA, Chicago, doesn't matter. I know that those areas are not homogenous regions. There are differences within those cities. Well, how can I get at the intricacies of each of those? Well, the census has created its own census geography so that you're able to examine those particular units. So the smallest unit is the census block. And then as you group census blocks together, you have a census block group. And then as you group census block groups together, you can have census tracts. And census tracts are about 4,000 people. They usually follow political boundaries, roads, etc. In this diagram, you can see the hierarchy of census geography. You have block 3014 that fits into block group 3, and then block group 3 fits in census tract 5.02. There is something else you have to understand when examining census data, and that is the Federal Information Processing Standards. And I've given an example here. So here is a five-digit number, and the first two numbers are your state number. So in Pennsylvania, the first two numbers are 42. And then the other three numbers, the three numbers right after that, is your county code. So 101 is the county code for the county of Philadelphia. So 42101 is Philadelphia County, Pennsylvania. And I'll show you how that is important. So here is an example. This is a census tract outlined in green. And what you can see is the full FIPS code 24013. And 24 is Maryland and 013 is Carroll County. And then look at that census tract ID. And then look at the full census tract ID, how the FIPS code and the census tract ID are combined. Now, within that census tract, we have this census block group. And again, you can see how that affects the full FIPS county code, right? The block group ID and the full block group ID and how those numbers are tied to this particular area. And finally, the census block. Again, looking at that FIPS code, all the way down to the block ID to get the full block ID. Okay, well, how can we get this data? Well, you can go to its fairly new website called data.census.gov. And what I'm showing you here is the advanced search, and you can examine all the filters in the census search engine to examine this data. So I'm going to choose the county as my filter, and what it will ask me is what state, and I'll say Pennsylvania, and then it'll ask, do you want individual counties or do you want all counties? I select all counties, and it shows me that I can get this information in table, maps, or pages. So here is an example of what the table view looks like on this particular website, as you can examine each individual number with its county. However, what if you're examining, you want to take a look at a pattern within your state? Well, you could switch to the map view. And here is a map view of Pennsylvania based on the census numbers for 2010. And you can see the very large high population areas in southeastern Pennsylvania, and then sort of Allegheny County out there in western Pennsylvania. 
You can also download this data, as I've shown here. This is the downloaded data set within Excel. It gives you the geo underscore ID, the name, and sort of this field name called P001001. Well, you can see right under it, that's sort of the ID, geographic area name, and total. That sort of tells you what each of those right above those fields mean. However, what if you do not have that information in that second row? Well, the data set comes with its own metadata, data about data. So you can see here that P001001 is the total population. And in fact, when you examine sometimes this data within different spatial formats like shapefiles, you may not see it say total. It may just say P001001. So you'll have to examine either a data dictionary or a metadata document to understand what each of those numbers is trying to represent. I hope this video was helpful and you have a better understanding of the census. Have a great day.